Hello everybody, welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And I don't have announcements today other than to remind you that winter semester starts the week of January 13th. We are finished with Wellness Farm programming for 2013. So uh, we'll offer lots of exciting new things next year, but no announcements about that. I do have an update for you. Last week I talked about this couple uh, who were afraid of their daughter being taken from the home because they opted for an alternative form of therapy. And uh, we have some good news here. Here. Um, the state, uh, the, the uh, guardian who was appointed by the state has resigned uh, from that position, effectively ending the two month standoff with Sarah's parents. Um, and uh, the, the, this should be the end of it, although it may not be. My experience has been that. Um, Government officials and, and healthcare professionals don't like to be, uh, they don't like to lose. And so sometimes they'll file additional actions. I don't put that past them. But if you remember, Sarah is the child who has leukemia. Uh, the chemotherapy was causing significant health problems. The parents chose to discontinue it and try another path. Um, representatives from the hospital, the health profession, engaged uh, child protection authorities and probate court and, and went all the way up to the Supreme Court. The guardian that was appointed by the appeals courts resigned, and so hopefully this family can come back home. The parents left the country. They were afraid that authorities would just show up on their doorstep and take this child away. So anyway, we have a temporary happy ending to the story. Story. Hopefully that'll continue and I'll keep you posted on that. Uh, today I want to talk about breast cancer and prostate cancer and the relationship between diet. And actually we'll start with breast cancer and I want to talk about two studies, one of which that showed that having high cholesterol increased your risk of breast cancer and the other that showed that adolescents who eat a high fat diet have a higher risk of developing breast cancer as adults. So let's start with the, um, uh, the high fat diet, okay? And this particular study showed that eating a high fat diet during puberty influences breast cancer risks in several ways. It tends to lead to tumors that are much more aggressive and are uh, less resistant or more resistant to treatment and that occur in much younger women. And the researchers in this study reported that the increased risk was not the weight gain during, uh, as a result of eating the high fat diet, but the fat itself. Uh, the type of fat measured was saturated fat, and, um, and there is some reason to believe that the risk is, remains high even if a lower fat diet is adopted later on. Now, I would, I would mitigate that with the idea that um, uh, eating a whole foods plant-based diet that's low in fat is different than the way most people cut the fat in our country, which is to eat lower fat dairy products and that sort of thing. But in any case, uh, certainly some reasons to pay attention to diet and adolescence. The other study um, looked at the relationship between cholesterol levels and estrogen receptor positive breast cancer risk and uh, determined that there was a connection. And the mechanism is that a byproduct of cholesterol functions much like estrogen in accelerating the growth and metastases of the most common forms of breast cancer. Um, also interferes with the action of treatment on some of these cancers. And this isn't the only study that's shown this, and it is consistent with what Dr. Campbell and his colleagues found in the China study, that cholesterol was predictive not only of the risk for cardiovascular events and coronary artery disease, but also the risk for cancer. So this is not new information, just another study showing this connection. Well, where do people take in cholesterol? It's from the animal foods. Where's the saturated fat coming? Principally from animal foods. And the good news is that adopting a whole foods, low fat, plant-based diet will lower your cholesterol, reduce the amount of saturated fat in the diet, and therefore lower the risk of breast cancer. And of course, the earlier this is done, the better. Um, you know, I think a lot of people mistakenly think that if they let their children eat whatever they want to until they leave home, that some type of magical occurrence is going to happen, and these kids are going to wake up and change their diet and eat a health-promoting diet later on. Well, that isn't what happens, and uh, this particular study seems to indicate that um, even dietary improvement later may not entirely remove the elevated risks. So, um, good reason to eat well. You want to avoid breast cancer. So we're going to give equal time to the men today. We're going to talk about prostate cancer. Um, this study, it was a pilot study done by Dr. Dean Ornish and his colleagues. Ornish, of course, is the Dean Ornish who was one of the first people to talk about the connection between a low-fat diet, more plant-based, and heart disease. Um, now, in this particular study, what was measured was the length of telomeres. Telomeres are complexes of DNA and protein that are found at the end of chromosomes, and they're crucial for cellular health. 
And the shortening of telomeres is associated with aging and increased risk of disease, including increased risk of prostate cancer and prostate cancer recurrence. So the study included 35 men with biopsy confirmed low risk prostate cancer. Men in the intervention group agreed to a comprehensive program that included diet, activity, stress management, and a support group. The diet was low in fat and refined foods, included lots of plant food and fruits and vegetables. Exercise was at least 30 minutes a day for six days a week. The support group met for an hour each week. They learned stress reduction techniques and they were assigned. And then the other group, the, the um, control group, was active surveillance only. During five years of follow-up, and that's a good long time to follow, those in the intervention group experienced lengthening of telomeres. Those in the control group, where they were just being looked at, no intervention at all, their telomeres actually shortened during that period of time. And the degree of increase in telomere length was associated with the level of compliance. So the better the men did with all the changes they were asked to make, the longer their telomeres got. Now Ornish is going to conduct some research over a longer period of time to try and put the connection together between telomere length and specific cancer risk. And so we'll hear more about that later. The important point is that the diet and lifestyle changes that these guys made that resulted in their longer telomeres have already been proven in the scientific journals to reduce the risk of prostate cancer and to stop the progression of prostate cancer. Um, and I always tell people, I say when people come to the wellness farm, they don't come in and say, listen, I'm here to get my telomeres lengthened. They say, I'm here to get over this disease I have or I want to not get diseases. So you know, that's what we focus on. This is just a measurement tool for evaluating health. So um, a low-fat, plant-based diet comprised of whole foods with exercise, the best way to achieve the goal of reducing your risk for or stopping or even reversing uh, diseases like prostate cancer. So in both cases, with, we're talking about breast cancer in women and prostate cancer in men, diet is the key. So eat a whole foods, plant-based diet, low in fat. That's the best way for you to survive and to thrive for a long time. All right, so that's all for today. I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news. Have a great day.